Hani Jadid, eight years old, was leaving hospital for his new life. It will be without his arm and without his four cousins who were killed when he was wounded. Yabu! <laughs> Yabu! Hani lives in government held territory. The attack happened a week ago before the ceasefire. But geography, politics, and timing can't matter much to a bewildered, agonized eight year old boy. The university hospital is in West Aleppo, controlled by the government. It is better supplied than anywhere on the rebel held east side and has treated thousands of war wounded. Rauda al Yusuf, who's seven, was not sleeping peacefully. She was shot in her spine last night, 24 hours after the ceasefire began. Oh. This is a chest. This is a chest, yeah, so. Yeah. This is the vertebrae. The bullet is actually then. It's through the vertebrae, yeah. From the back. So it's a clear break in her yeah. vertebrae. Well, you so, can't see that. So she's, she, she's paralyzed? Yeah. Her mother, Turkia, is too worried about the wreck of her daughter's life to speculate about who pulled the trigger. The doctors told me that her legs will be paralyzed all her life. Rauda was very active, very loving, and very caring. She was chatting with her father when it happened, sitting with him and nothing was wrong. We don't know what will happen to her. Aid for the wounded across the city could come this way through Beni Zaid in northwest Aleppo on the Castello Road, the route out to Turkey. It's designated as a humanitarian corridor in the ceasefire agreement, but it still isn't safe. The fighting here hasn't stopped. The plan, the Russians say, is for both the Syrian army and the rebels to pull back from the Castello Road on Thursday morning. The ceasefire deal also depends on the rebels. This attack in June was by a group backed by the Americans called Fastakim Kama Umet. It says it's respecting the ceasefire. But in a Skype interview across the front line to East Aleppo, its spokesman told me they were not happy with a the deal they say lets the regime off the hook. What is going to end this war? The war will end when we achieve the dreams of the people, freedom and justice, when the Assad regime falls and we punish the criminals who killed children and women in the last six years. The men of this displaced family call the rebels terrorists. In the sixth year of war, the best refuge they can find is a flat on the front line with no power or running water. After some especially heavy shelling, the side of the building collapsed, taking away a room. The family survived and they stayed on. You can see, he said, the whole country is destroyed. Syria is the most savage example of the way that the old political order across the Middle East is decaying. World and regional powers and powerful ideologies are competing to shape the future. Syrians sometimes say that if the foreigners went away, they might be able to make peace. If that was ever true, it's too late. The Middle East is in a period of profound historical change. It's the result of a century of misrule, disastrous foreign intervention, stagnation, and repression. This war is part of all of that. No wonder it's so hard to stop. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Aleppo.